Hello and welcome to The Old Flyers. In Captain Mike Bannister's book, Concord, referring to this magnificent aircraft, he said, I have always remained convinced she'll have a successor. One of the reasons I have kept engaged with various proposals that are out there for supersonic business jets and airliners. The one very likely to succeed, it seems to me, is a design called Overture, developed by the American startup Boom. End of quote. Captain Bannister came across the company Boom on a visit to Farnborough Air Show. He was shown a concept model with a planiform that included a highly swept wing and a sharp, almost fighter-like nose. It was very purposeful looking. Two years later, he returned to the show and saw an iteration that was very different. A gorgeous looking design with wings that had a S-shaped leading edge plus long angular underwing intakes and a familiar vertical fin. He pointed out to the chief designer the strong resemblance to Concorde. The designer smiled and said, yeah, well, you Brits got it right the first time. In the interest of accuracy, that should include the French too. In July 2022, at the Farnborough International Air Show, Boom Supersonic announced a design change giving the Overture four engines instead of three, a gull wing and a contoured fuselage. This final iteration of the aircraft is expected to go into production this year, 2024. It will be carbon net zero with sustainable fuel, a range of 4,250 miles, a Mark 1.7 cruise speed and carry up to 80 passengers and have a cruising altitude of 60,000 feet. Boom's supersonic technology demonstrator, the XB-1, is the world's first independently developed supersonic jet. It has been designed, built and tested in Centennial, Colorado. It is now at Mojave Air and Space Port, where it will continue flight preparations. Here is a video of the program of taxi testing in November 2023. Ready to go. Allowing about 20 knots in the taxi. It's comfortable. Excel to 40 knots. Copy, thank you. It'll be 60 knots. That's awesome. 89 knots. Control copies. That was a pretty cool taxi event. Thanks, everyone. The XB-1 was built of carbon composite and titanium and has three General Electric J85 engines. The air-cooled turbine engines in Overture will each develop 35,000 pounds of thrust. Here is Vice President of XB-1 program Jeff Mabry detailing this aircraft's milestones. My name is Jeff Mabry and I'm the Vice President of the XB-1 program at Boom Supersonic. As we close out 2023, I'd like to share an update on XB-1. The team is in Mojave, where we've been testing and achieving key milestones, all of which are critical in progressing toward first flight. When we talk about testing a complex system, we start with components, move on to assemblies, and finally, we test the aircraft as a whole. Over the last few months, we've accomplished multiple complex integrated systems tests, ensuring that with any given test, the appropriate combination of aircraft components and systems can work together successfully. In August, we received an Experimental Research and Development Airworthiness Certificate from the Federal Aviation Administration following a detailed aircraft and paperwork inspection. This assessment is the last by an external entity that evaluates the preparedness of the aircraft for flight testing. Internally, Boom has conducted a flight readiness review, an integral element in ensuring the preparedness of a team and a new aircraft designed to execute a first flight. We've taken the time necessary to fully evaluate key systems. We've upgraded our landing gear, optimized engine intakes, and streamlined ground operations. The propulsion system has passed all final checks to ensure readiness. The engine and inlets have been tested statically under numerous conditions, including 15 knots of crosswind. We even conducted a unique medium-speed taxi test with a bell mouth attached to the inlet that simulated the airflow the engine will see at takeoff. A critical step in evaluating the aircraft and its systems as a whole is to conduct operations representative of what the aircraft will normally do. 
we conducted a successful 60 knot test, which then led to 89 knots and 94 knots in November. That's 108 miles per hour, and we're only going faster from there. We've been testing each component, each system, and all of the aircraft systems as an integrated whole again and again in order to see them all come together and consistently working in the form of a completed aircraft in a flight configuration. These are mature milestones that we have achieved on a road filled with barriers that we will continue to break. This will culminate when we achieve the milestone of flight in the Mojave Desert, which will be a stepping stone to the historic achievement of supersonic flight. Boom announced that American Airlines has put deposits on 20 overtures with a further 40 options. United Airlines has committed to 15 and Japan Airlines 20. Obviously, there is a long way to go if you compare these numbers to the order books for Airbus and Boeing. Here is a schematic of the systems on Overture. It wasn't long before the US military came calling. Northrop Grumman are partnered to offer Overture variants to the military. Blake Scholl, founder and CEO of Boom, announces the future is now. It has been more than half a century since we've had a mainstream speed up in air travel. But during this time, we've made incredible advancements in the foundational technologies for designing, developing and building aircraft. We have advanced aerodynamics, new materials, and significantly more efficient engines. And today marks a historic milestone at Boom, as we have brought these technologies together for the first time to build a new generation of faster aircraft, of speed, in service of greater human connection. And along the way, we have set the principles and the foundation, not just for the technical design of future aircraft, but how we approach our mission in general. We've established our principles of speed, safety, and sustainability without compromise. And we've begun to pave the path toward a mainstream supersonic future. Today we stand here on the precipice of a new age of travel. Concorde provided proof that there is a market for supersonic travel, even if that meant paying 55% more for a ticket. Time really is money. Our Northern Hemisphere friends Reckon cutting a Miami to Madrid flight time to four and a half hours from seven and a half hours is extraordinary. How then do you think Australians would feel if they could shorten the more than 17 hours it takes to fly from Perth to London? Boom investors must have deep pockets. Concorde's development costs were in the billions and were shouldered by the economies of Great Britain and France. Add to that the cost of specialised training pilots and engineers would need to operate the Overture. I wish Boom all the best. It is a worthy objective. Just wondering though, strange name. Management at Concorde went out of their way to avoid sonic booms. <laughs> New York denied landing rights for a time because of that very issue. Maybe it means the economy is booming. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you have learnt something new today. 
This encourages us to create new content for you.